Hello my friends and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself and Marta. I hope you guys are all keeping well. Paul is having a well-deserved day off today so it is down to yours truly to give you the latest and greatest news from the tech world from the last 24 or so hours. So we're going to get stuck right in today with an update from Nvidia with the RTX 3080 20 gigabytes. And I know I can already see some of you in the chat being like, oh for goodness sake, what now? What's happened now? <laughs> and the latest is that, well, allegedly a Chinese content creator by the name of Big Hardware Player has allegedly managed to get their hands on an engineering sample of the RTX 3080 with 20, uh, 20 gigabytes. So the GPU he has allegedly managed to get his hands on here could be the as of yet unreleased RTX 3820 gigabyte, which of course was allegedly supposed to launch last year but was cancelled, or the upcoming GeForce 30 X, uh, sorry, RTX 3080 Ti. But the leaker has provided a screenshot which tells us a lot of information, and a lot of it immediately raises several question marks. We can see that it was allegedly manufactured by Colorful, that's fine, but the GPU-Z information is where it starts to get confusing. The graphics card allegedly has clock speeds of an RTX 3090 with 1395 MHz base and 1695 MHz boost, but the software is recognising it as an RTX 3080, which is really weird considering that this card just doesn't exist yet, and Tech Power Up would have not updated the software to support it. And what is even weirder, to be honest, is that they apparently seem to be using some sort of engineering driver for the card, which is very uncommon for a driver to work this early with unreleased hardware. So, before I go any further into this, I would just say that a pretty significant helping of Skepticism and Salt TM is definitely required for this one. Videocards.com did try to reach out to Colourful for a bit of a statement to try and see whether or not this leak is actually real, but the statement they got back isn't what I would classify as particularly helpful. They said, quote, Colourful representatives claim that this rumour does not need a statement claiming that many content creators often pursue sensational headlines to get more attention, and video cards state that they haven't yet had a clear answer whether this leak is fake or not. But let's go back to the GPU-Z screenshot just for a second. So, beyond the clock speed weirdness that I've already discussed, what's also very strange to me is that the versions of GPU-Z are all different. We have 2.36, 2.35, and 2.34. And the fact that the leaker did not show any photos or video of the card also raises my eyebrows pretty significantly, I would say. Now, I'm not saying this is definitely fake, but I'm just saying keep all of this in mind. If it is an early engineering sample, this is I might have changed the specs we saw from Kapiti 7 kimi or however you pronounce it, I do apologise um, for that on Twitter. But we have heard from one source that 12 gigabytes is what we are going to see, but another source is saying that we will see 20 gigabytes. So it's not really helping the situation that there's all this confusion as to what NVIDIA are actually planning to do with the RTX 30, uh, 80, 20 gigabytes. You know, is it even going to be called the 3080 20 gigabyte model or is it going to be the 3080 Ti or is that going to be a different thing? We just don't know. We've also heard just while we're on the topic that the pricing isn't set yet, but apparently NVIDIA will be targeting 999. But that isn't the only information that this leaker had for us today. There was also 3D mark scores shown, and these were helpfully put into a nice chart by Harukazi over on Twitter, and you can see it for yourself on screen. And as you can see, apart from the top result where the 3090 is ahead, it's fire strike, it's fairly close between the two. Obviously, the 3090 is ahead in all of the scores, but the gap between the two is obviously less significant in Fire Strike Extreme, Time Spy, Time Spy Extreme, and so on. So, at the, as we stand at the moment, I would say that you should definitely, again, maintain that healthy level of skepticism surrounding this leak until we get a more clear statement from Colourful, or until more inf official information is released, or, or what have you. Just sort of keep the salt at hand for this one. It is definitely possibly fake. With everything I've discussed, I think we can all agree that there's definitely several things that make you go, hmm, on this one. But, again, as video cards themselves pointed out, at the moment we just don't have a clear answer whether or not this leak is fake or not. Let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. Do you think this is real or not? 
Hit me with your opinions in the comments. But we are going to shift gears now away from NVIDIA and hit up our good friends AMD as we have an epic Milan benchmark for you today. So of course we did get our first real look at the epic Milan CPU at AMD's CES 2021 event, excuse me, which sadly was a lot of light on the information, a bit too high on the cringe, but it was still nice to see our first real look at third generation epic. But today, as I previously mentioned, we do have a benchmark for the processor. And just like last time, we see a 1P single socket server running the AMD EPIC 7643 processor, which of course is part of the third gen Milan lineup, which is in itself based on the Zen 3 architecture. As for the specifications of this chip, we do see 48 cores and 96 threads, and a base clock speed of 2.3 GHz and boost up to 3.6, which is pretty damn respectable. However, in this particular benchmark, we do see all cores boasting close to 3.45. But what about the performance? The performance, I hear you ask. Well, let's have a look at the scores, shall we? We see 58, 50 points in single core and 121 and 80 in the multi-core. For comparison, however, let's put it against a dual Xeon Platinum H280 server, which was helpfully discovered by WCCFTech.com, which has 56 cores and 112 threads, and that in itself scored 50, 48 points in single core and 117, 171 points in the multi-core test. And to further put that into some sort of context for you, I also have some graphs here which were helpfully made by WCCF Tech to give you a look at how it competes against the 7543 as well as two Xeon Platinum rigs that we have here. So let's discuss in terms of the difference what we can see here compared to the 7543. We do see a lower single core score here, which is due to the lower boost clock, but in multi-thread it does come out 9% faster. But as always, it's so important to remember that this is still early. As with anything, it can change as we approach the final release product. Now alongside that we also have the discovery of an EPIC 7643 which is a 2P server which has two EPIC 7513 processors. Each of them has 32 cores and 64 threads each so that total of 64 cores and 128 threads and this one we can see each CPU boasting a 2.6 gigahertz base clock, 64 megs of L3, 16 of L2 and we can also see that the all-core boosts of 1.8 GHz were operating here, which is not that impressive, but again, only silicon, etc, etc, etc. So, basically, TLDR in the single-core score, we see Milan doing very well here against Xeon Platinums. However, in the multi-core, it is definitely a bit closer, but once again, keep in mind that these are early release silicon, so... I'm not even releasing one kind of engineering, sorry, I should say engineering. Um, but regardless, it is still early for these, so Epic is definitely going to be one to watch, and I think we could see AMD really start to pick up some steam in this particular area. But let's move on, shall we, to some news from Microsoft. Now, it's not exactly a secret that Microsoft have been pretty damn aggressive when it comes to their studio acquisitions as of late. They rocked the boat pretty massively a little while back when they acquired you know, Bethesda, id, and all the rest over at ZeniMax. And it's no secret that they're still on the hunt for more studios to purchase. And there was a supposed industry insider who took to the Xbox era forums. And they claimed that they had heard rumours of a number of acquisitions that will become public this year. And they even went on to imply that they're on the same level as the Bethesda buyout, which was huge, as I'm sure you'd agree. Now, another insider, a fellow by the name of King Ragnar, who also has a bit more of a reputable reputation, added some credibility to this, saying that he's been hearing the same thing over the last few months, and we'll see an announcement either at the end of this year, so 2021, or at the beginning of 2022. And his exact quote is, quote, I don't know who this guy is, but I've been hearing the same thing for months, that, Beth uh, that, sorry, that Microsoft wants to acquire another publisher. Negotiations with Bethesda lasted three years, as I've been pointing out, I believe the announcement will be the end of 2021 or the beginning of 2022. Now, Brad Sams 
who also said that some big names in the industry were being approached by Microsoft just last week, was asked about the rumor, but sadly he didn't have any much have anything much to say, just a smirking emoji. Make of that what you will. So obviously that raises the obvious question of who could it be? So obviously, you know, the amount of companies out there available to purchase, almost endless. But ones on the level of the Bethesda buyout, now that list, I'm sure we can all agree, is much, much shorter. The rumour mill currently going round is that it's going to be EA, or possibly even Square Enix. Now personally, I don't think Square Enix... Uh, no. <laughs> and also, it is valid to point out that EA is way bigger than Bethesda. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen, of course. I would have said that the Bethesda buyout wouldn't have happened either, so here we are. So <laughs> It's all fun and speculation. Personally, I don't think Square Enix would go for it, to be honest. I mean, maybe they would, but I just, I don't know, I can't see it. I can't see it. You know, Square Enix has very close ties to Sony, and obviously we already know that Final Fantasy XVI and Project Athea are going to be timed PS5 exclusives, and again, they just have that long, long history of working with Sony. You know, for a long time, you know, Final Fantasy VII was PS1 only, and obviously all the 8 and 9 were on PS1, 10 on the PS2, and so on and so on. So I just don't see this happening, personally. Um, as for EA... I don't know, would they? Would they even be interested in being bought out? I can't see EA doing that, to be honest, but maybe if Microsoft had a good enough deal for them, they would consider it. I mean, the possibilities are, you know, not limitless, because, again, the, the size of this has to be, you know, pretty big, but there's definitely a few choices that could be feasible. I want to know your thoughts, guys. Who do you think that Microsoft could be looking to purchase next? Now, again, according to these rumours, it has to be on the level of the Bethesda buyout. So keep your predictions within that. I'm curious to hear your thoughts, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if you agree or disagree with my assessment on the EA and Square Enix rumors, or if you've got someone else in mind who I'm not perhaps considering. Anyway, guys, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Do remember to like and subscribe, and of course, click that bell icon to get notified when we upload, because, well, YouTube. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.